Hi, Joe Glavin with City Floor Supply. Welcome to Facebook Live. Uh, we're here in a uh, demonstration area. We have uh, Logler and uh, Loba, Vocal Loba, Loba Vocal um, on site uh, running the class. Uh, yesterday we did a bunch of equipment demonstration, went over all of the machines, the trio, the Hummel, uh, the single, and the flip. <laughs> Today we are welcoming Loba. I guess this would be the first um, introduction of Loba with City Floor. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Uh, they have some really great innovative products. Uh, a lot of work went into preparing the panels yesterday. Um, where Tom is standing, that is Tom Zagula from Loba. Um, these panels were all built by the National Wood Flooring Association class for advanced install. Um, so these panels were all handmade, hand cut, on site and installed, glued, routed, um, slip tongue put in. Every one of these pieces has slip tongue in it. Um, so they routed in metal, they made medallions, sunbursts, rhombus patterns, you name it. So we're going to coat them. And I would call this a little bit of an advanced uh, sand and finish school because, you know, it takes a lot to sand and finish. Um, multi misdirection wood, various species, cherry, walnut, um, Santos, I mean, you name it, it's in these floors, uh, metal. So uh, we're going to walk over. We just coated this with Intensive 2K, this uh, cherry maple uh, Monticello pattern. And we're going to go over to this basket weave, which is uh, walnut and, um, and maple. And we're going to coat this with uh, easy finish and last night we coated that with intensive 2k uh, rolled that on because it's a 12 hour dry time and um, so let's take a walk over and have a look i'm tom zagula with loba vocal usa um, we have here uh, the intensive it's our 2k intensive it's a natural oil sealer um, so really low vocs uh, super friendly for the environment Really easy application, um, no roller marks, no stop marks. You could really roll it in any direction as we kind of did on this, because obviously on a pattern floor, there is no really direction. So you kind of just have to pick one and go with it. Um, but it is a roll on and a buff off system. Um, it really accentuates because it is a penetrating sealer. So it accentuates the really the beauty and highlights some of the grain and the detail in the wood a little bit better than some traditional coatings. Um, it is an overnight dry time as Joe had mentioned. So we would, did finish these uh, panels last night so we can go ahead and coat them today where we show the process and we'll do the removal process in a little bit here when we're still giving it that 45 minute to an hour penetration time. So this is already set. The greatest advantage of this product is, is that there is no inner coat abrasion necessary. So we will just come on here, we will vacuum the next day and you will go ahead and apply the water-based systems directly right on top of this product. Um, on this floor, we were actually going to go ahead and pick a easy finish. Um, this is our most popular single component finish. It is a single component finish with two component durability, super easy flow, um, almost lap line free. It really does. You can really roll it in any direction. So it's really perfect for this type of application. In conjunction with our micro 120 roller, it will put down 120 grams of material for every 10 and a half square feet. It is technically a square meter, so we know that we are consistently getting that five to 600 square feet per gallon on every single coat, so that we know we have the proper coverage every single time. Um, so easy finish, we're gonna decide to do a satin on this. We're gonna try to go ahead and just kind of bring up the life a little bit, but give it a nice satin velvety texture. When we step over to the rhomboid section, we're actually gonna go ahead and step up to a little bit shinier, just because it has a little bit of the Brazilian cherry in there as well, so we'll just make that pop a little bit more. Very fast, super easy. Go ahead and shake the bucket. No waiting 20 minutes or a half hour to go ahead and anything settle. We're just gonna go ahead and shake it out. Um, I prefer to roll out of a bucket just because it makes saturation a lot easier of the roller, uh, makes it for a lot more even uh, application as well. We're not worrying about different kind of roller marks and different kind of patterns and stuff like that. It is a clear non-yellowing finish, so it's not gonna go ahead and amber it up any more than we have already with the maple. Try to keep it that natural texture. So take a note, uh, you know, the roller size, um, the roller nap, you know, I, 
I was actually joking around a little bit earlier that um, Loba is like the fest tool of finishes. They've got everything. They've got buckets that fit their rollers. They've got liners that fit their buckets. Um, all of the catalyzed products are labeled like they're supposed to be. So you have A18, the component is B18. You know, it's it's really well thought out system. Uh, being able to roll out a water-based product uh, cross grain and not have lap lines or streaks is, uh, well, I mean, that's why this is, you know, an advanced finish. You know, it, it is, it's a hard thing to do. Yes. Dave Heverly says that panel looks sweet. The crew who did that was top notch. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, you're right, Dave. Uh, Dave Heverly is one of the crew that worked on um, this floor. And again, they hand cut all of these pieces. Uh, they created jigs, um, they used the capex saw, they, uh, I mean, just a lot of work went into this. Uh, they used router tables to route grooves in all four sides. And then this floor was glued down uh, Vockel's glue, right? That's correct. We used an MS-260 on here, so it's uh, up to an 8-inch solid, um, really quick, fast drive times. I'm going to get out of your way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that adhesive was actually used throughout the whole panels as well. So now with the roller application of the finish, you really only want to touch water base twice. So you want to almost listen to the roller. It's going to talk to you, right? If you hear a chattering sound, that just means you don't have enough finish. If it goes ahead and slides on you and doesn't roll and have kind of that slight slurping sound, then you just have too much finish. Your drips are scaring the crap out of me. Exactly. And that's the great thing about this finish. <laughs> it is so user friendly that literally I can go in any direction with it. As you kind of saw, I was just doing a quick brush around the, around the side, and it's just the, the roller's gonna go ahead and touch up right out to it, because the cap on here, you could roll right up onto the moldings. Shout out to Logler North America, who just signed in. They're excited to see what Tom is sharing. And then Francisco, who's uh, viewing from California. Nice. So actually, Mark, why don't you come over and tell us uh, the equipment that we used sanding here. Um, it was, tri we trioed this, right? Yes. Um, so the two floors right here, um, they were uh, very well installed. We had very little over and under wood, so we decided to go with the trio right away. Um, we actually flattened it with an 80 on a trio on those both panels. That panel over there had a little bit more over and under wood, especially the maple came up a little bit more, so we decided to go with a 60 on a Hummel and then continue with an 80 on a trio. All of those floors have been finished with 120 paper and 120 screen on a trio. Okay. We have a shout out to Mark. And as you see, you just want to go ahead and touch everything that you did with the initial one. If the brush or if you use a trim pad or something, you just want to go ahead and make sure that that roller is on there as well. It will leave a different texture. And now in most cases, you'd have to still kind of keep going the same way. With this finish, you don't have to. Just pick a direction. If I have to change halfway through to make it easier to walk out this way, then that's what I'll do. I can go ahead and I can apply it cross grain to just get it on. And then I can go with the, in that same direction to finish it off, or I could just go ahead and equalize back across the grain. So it really doesn't make a difference. We're not really looking at the floor anymore. I stopped looking at the floor pretty much as soon as I started using the Loba products because all I'm doing is literally where's my exit and what's the easiest way to get out of it. And I will roll in that direction. So you want to touch it twice. So you want to apply it. You could apply it in the entire room, extendable handle. So you just want to go ahead and apply it. Come back typewriter style to the beginning where you started, and then I call this the equalization process, right? So we're just going ahead and equalizing it, making sure that we have a nice even film and no heavy spots. And I don't even have to pick up the roller at the end. I already did it twice, so it's not going to go ahead and leave a lap mark. If it has a little bit of a, of a fat mark or a little bit of a lap line, it actually has such great self-leveling properties that it's going to go ahead and put it on and level off by itself. And that is the, one of the greatest advantages of this finish, making it the most popular finish that Loba sells throughout the 72 countries that we are currently in. And how long do you have to leave that set before you can buff and coat? Generally two to three hours, depending on conditions. Super wet, super humid, you may want to give it a little bit more. But generally after about three hours, you can go ahead and buff this. Now, with this system, you won't have to. Again, with the intensive, with that natural oil sealer, it is no intercoat abrasion. And it's really no intercoat abrasion unless this finish has some debris in it 
then we can go ahead and hit it with a maroon pad and then just go ahead and apply another coat. But other than that, there doesn't really need to be because there is no additional grain raise. With that natural oil intensive sealer sealing the floor off, there is no more open grain. So I know it is. Now there'll probably be a little bit of debris you, just because we're in a warehouse. Yeah, so maybe, by, maybe later after lunch we'll probably hit it with a maroon pad just to do it, make it look nice for a second one. But yeah, normal job sites don't have 25 people standing around staring at you walking in different directions. Yeah. Come All to right. our jobs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just saying even if you got to break it, uh, just a maroon pad. Just maroon yeah, pad no at this point. Strip. No, no, no 320 sticky paper. No, no need. Because at this point, where it's still a fresh finish, it's still done the same day. If you came back tomorrow, yeah, you're going to need something more aggressive because it's going to be already 90% cured in that 24 hour period. So now you're, you're, you're almost uh, buffing fully cured finish. And it powders up real nice. And then it'll powder up real nice, just like an oil. So if you were waiting, how long, uh, what would you hit it with, say, if you had to wait a month before uh -huh. you put the next coat on? Then we would use a Loba 180 perforator pad. 180? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because the finishes get so strong that uh, 220 is just not going to touch it at this point. They're, 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 such, they're such durable. These are the, uh, easy finish at a single component is for medium to heavy, even commercial traffic in certain cases. You don't worry about buffer scratch in it, like it's the, the clear nope. scratch? The, the great thing about the Loba perforated pad um, is yeah. that it's um, just pure paper. It's not actually a screen mesh, so, so it's actually flat. So it's almost like hard plating. So it really minimizes your scratch patterns. Really? Mm -hmm. It won't load? Nope. It doesn't load up. And then since it, it's really good for a, um, here, let me just grab this one. You got it? So this is a, this is called our perforator pad. So you could see right through it. So even on a dustless system, we have a dustless pad that goes underneath it. So you have your vacuum system sucking it all up. You can't clog the screen up, right? Because it's not going to, you're gonna suck it all up. And plus, since it's flat, it's not like a screen where you're only sanding with the high points of the screen. This will not leave a scratch pattern. So you can't leave a scratch pattern with this stuff. So we use the 180s for our intercoat abrasion, and then we use our 100 and 120 grits on final sandings to remove any scratches or stuff like that um, if, if, if necessary. And no dish. Even with your glosses? Even with the glosses. That is okay. correct. <laughs> yes, this is a different technique. I mean, these are different products. So we are kind of changing the game a little bit into what, what the norm is. So yeah, we have those products to do it. So he coated this floor. There was no pattern. He went this way, this way, this way again, and then came out this way. So we'll see. And the same thing with the two component finish. So single component, now you think, all right, a two component finish. Well, you should probably be able to go ahead and pull that as well. So Super AT. This is our aluminum oxide and ceramic reinforced two component finish. This is the most durable finish that we make with the fastest cure time. Um, also has obviously the most durability. So this is gonna be the creme de la creme of our finishes. Again, A12, B12, match up the two hardener numbers, you're good to go. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you will go ahead and take the hardener, pour it into the can. Is the sheen in the hardener? In certain ones, yes. So specific ones will have it. So this one is only for Super AT satin. So that means that the, hard, uh, the matting agents are physically inside this. Other ones will share, so then they don't have the matting agents in there. So as long as the numbers match up, you're good to go. If you grab a different hardener, yeah, you can get a, a, an undesirable sheen level. And then once we shake this, again, there is no waiting, even with a two component product. Just go ahead and shake it and put it right onto the floor. Uh, Loba finishes have excellent defoaming properties, so it's almost impossible to really foam these products up, even with a vigorous shaking like I'm doing right now. So you don't have to let that sit for like 15 minutes to nope. defoam. I'm gonna pour it into the bucket and I'm rolling on immediately. About 30 seconds roughly, but if you get pretty vigorous with it, you're good to go. He's a strong guy. And then also, if you're doing larger areas, please batch your finishes together. Don't go out of single individual gallons. If by accident your guy did grab the wrong hardener and mixed it wrong, and then all of a sudden you're doing that last section, walking out into the foyer, walking out the front door, guess what? That section may look different. So that's why we really like these buckets. Load them up, put four gallons in one, you'll be able to coat 2,000 square feet out of one bucket, all batched together so you know that the, every, the sheen level, even though it may be off with that one wrong hardener, it's still gonna be consistent throughout the entire floor rather than having patchy areas. So again, same thing. I, I use a little chip brush there. For this one, I'll just demonstrate a little different technique and we'll go with a trim pad. Trim pad usually goes on a little bit thinner 
So what you want to do again is just put it on wet. The thicker the water base goes on, let the finish work for you. Don't work for the finish. So the wetter is better with water based finishes. And then the applicator you're using for this is the same as it's the, the same. Easy? It's still the Micro 120. That is our universal pretty much roller for most of our water-based finishes. And you don't recommend T-bar at all? You can T-bar as well, but on a pattern floor like this, it just makes it a little bit more, a little bit more difficult, right? Because wh what direction do you do? If you're uh, the also thing, the problem with a T-bar is not a problem, but one of the, I guess, the negatives is how do you control your coverage? Lightweight T-bar, heavyweight T-bar. If there's any undulations in the beams, now you're just skimming off the high spots off of those beams, off of those little high points. Now you have a lot, lot less finish on that side. You could have streaks. Yeah. So that's really why we recommend rolling. But any finish that's designed to be rolled can be T-barred, not vice versa. So Tom, what about these? Um, so once you put it up, uh, open time is... Uh-huh. Uh, you got about three hours of, uh, of setup time before it goes ahead and starts to get a little bit too tacky on you. And most of the time, 2,000 square feet, you should be able to coat in that time, so no worries. David Williams says, awesome work. <laughs> Thanks, David. So the uh, Brazilian cherry, some pieces are showing some shiny spots. Yes. So with I don't know exotics, if you guys can see those. Yeah. With certain exotics, especially like Brazilian cherry or Ipe, they have such a tight grain structure, and when they go ahead and use an oil product of any type, be it a natural oil or penetrating or a, a, a urethane based, you can have a little bit of bleed back. So when you have a little tiny bit of this bleed back that you can kind of see in some of these areas, these little speckles, if they're excessive and you left it on too thick and you went on your first time a little bit too heavy, come back with a beige pad real quick just buff that surface really fast, and then just go ahead and coat it. Most of the time, you really don't even need to do anything. These little speckles are just a, chain in a change in sheen level. They're not raised, they're absolutely smooth with the floor. So all you actually have to do is just apply the finish. Once this finish dries, it mutes that because now it's all the same sheen level, you'll never see those spots. And again, I did the, t I did the trim pad. You can start to see it's starting to set up a little bit. So what my first pass with the roller is, in order to not have two different textures, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna re-roll over that entire wall section anywhere that that trim pad touched. So now I know that that texture is gonna be exactly the same throughout and I'm not gonna have streaky areas or uneven marks. And you're not gonna pull that out? Nope. And you can see it, I can roll right up to the baseboard Wow, look, no finish on the baseboard. Magic. Does the system have the ability to, to only mix up a half a gallon if you, you know, sure. in a small? So each case comes with a quart container, so you can mix each quart individually. It is a 10 to 1 ratio. Even if you wanted to, use 10 teaspoons of finish, one teaspoon of hardener, go make your sample. Every case comes with one, so all the two component finishes come with a mixing cup. So it's got the ratios already on it. All you have to do is just pour part A up to the line, pour part B, mix it up, and you can go. And now, you know, if you had 600 feet, do a gallon, a quart, and now you have enough for 625 feet rather than having to kill the whole gallon. If you're just showing color samples, do you have to, do you have to catalyze it? Yes. Yep, because as, as with some of them, as with this one, the sheen level is actually in the hardener. So if you just use the base, you wouldn't have the proper sheen. Craig Miller is giving you a shout out, Tom. Ah, why aren't you here, Craig? So again, you can go this way. I can do this section if it makes it easier for me to walk out. And I can roll it in this section. What's the shelf life of the same tree on here? If you have like a third of a gallon left over and you're hoping to use that on the next day. So, of course. So the great advantage of it is, is why I also like using the buckets with the liner bags. Like we're using this, to, we're using this next, right? So I'm going to step out for a second. Yeah. Don't worry. So I'm using this bucket again in a, in a few minutes, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll just take this off. I'll wrap this up into here. I'll put the lid back on top of it. 
and boom. Now we'll use it in two, three hours. I'll use it the next day. I could use it two days from now without actually having to wash out my roller and get other materials in. Wow, yeah, that's, a, that's nice. So now you have that option to go ahead and use it even on another job site, right? right? And then shelf life is a year, 12 months on all products. So you, yeah. you'll, you'll be able to take that bucket, you'll be able to take that half gallon, store it in your garage for six months, and then just go right back ahead and use it. <laughs> so here's the um, mixing quart that Tom was talking about. Uh, it is lidded, which is, I mean, again, you just think of everything, right? So instead of having an empty non-topped quart, you have the mixing stuff on the side here, and you can just shake it up and then do your small room or small foyer or sample. And this is also why I like the handle. It's nice and light. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm pretty much holding it with two fingers, but I could extend it. So now I could do larger areas. So I'm not restricted to doing three, four foot sections. I could do an eight foot section, the whole thing across the entire room, and then equalize two sections at the same time, rather than going ahead and having to work in little small sections. One, this gives me the added benefit of a, of a wet edge that's going to be a little bit longer and a little bit farther so I can cut into different areas in you know, really large rooms or cut up rooms. And just the ability to be able to really relax and not really have to think too much when you're finishing is a big benefit for me. I don't want to make finishing complicated. I just want to go ahead and get in and get out. Is all your order based on stuff level? Pretty much from, from easy finish, single components, opti finishes, the Viva, to all the two component finishes, they all pretty much roll the same exact way. You shouldn't have to change your rolling technique just because you have a less expensive finish or a less durable finish. So we got work. Francisco saying City Floor needs to open a location in San Jose and we got Joe um, saying he needs us in Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna go? You. you wanna go? Yeah, man. <laughs> Alex is gonna go. This, this uh, uh, pattern, I've been in the finish business for more than 35 years, so I'm dating myself. Sanding this and finishing it are very uh, worrisome as a person who has uh, been in finishing. To see it look this good, uh, you know, and what was done both yesterday and you know, last night and seeing it is uh, is a thrill. I get uh, special thrills by seeing how good something so complex, because multiple species, uh, multiple direction, all those things uh, can really show and magnify uh, in, in, in this environment. And uh, this is not easy, and Tom has, has made it look easy with marketing yesterday. Uh, you know, prepping it uh, made this work, and the mechanics who did all the install, you know, it made it look easy, but it's, uh, it is high level work that is very, very uh, uh, well done. And, uh, uh, I'm thrilled. I, I'm really thrilled. That and never watch water base dry. Yeah. <laughs> Walk away. Don't call anybody. Don't call your rep and say, hey, it, looks, it, it doesn't look right. It's only 10 minutes. Wait an hour and then call me. That's right. That's exactly right. Don't worry, I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so that's that's the that's the Loba water based system in a nutshell. Right. Super easy, easy application, durable results. And then um, on the cobblestone end grain style walkway here, hallway, we're eventually gonna well we're later on we're gonna do Yeah, some impact oil, impact some natural oil, penetrating oils. Which would be buffed in. Um, and then some of the panels, the larger panels that are um, to our right are going to be various stain colors. Um, the, what's the alcohol stain? Uh, we're going to pick a couple different colors. We'll, we'll, we'll pick a color and we'll see which one goes the best. So we're going to walk over here to uh, Logler has uh, some adhesive that they're going to remove. Uh, we have the single and we have the flip. And I'll let Mark take over in a second, but the flip has a new uh, disc for introduced this year. I guess it what NBFA? Yes. And well, go ahead, Mark. 
Um, today I brought some new tools. Um, for the flip, we have a milling tool um, to make the flip a lot more aggressive. It's meant to be used on wood with aluminum oxide finish. In this case, we're gonna uh, remove some, some adhesive of a plywood. Um, it's a diamond insert tool and it's really, really aggressive. So everybody who buys it, please be careful with it. Try it out on a panel first and not on a, on a big job site. Um, I also brought the signal with me. And I have to ask for forgiveness because that's actually the previous version of the signal. The new version has bigger wheels and a carrying handle that makes transport easier. That was my demo unit. Um, so every new signal comes with uh, bigger, bigger wheels and a carrying handle. I brought the uh, milling attachment with me. Um, so we have different options. So it's pretty much uh, the base plate, which is stainless steel. It's roughly 40 pound uh, base plate. And then we have different milling tools. This is a scrabble green. Uh, scrabble green is meant to be used on concrete, on plywood to remove adhesive, tile adhesive, wood floor adhesive, uh, carpet bag residues, felt residues. Um, that is the gentle version. We have a more aggressive version. Uh, it introduces black, uh, scrabble black for yeah, more heavy work. And we have a uh, diamond sanding tool for it. It's a, it's a red segment to even out and level out concrete and make it porous. Um, the machine comes as it is right here with the regular plate. So you can do your ref regular sanding, buffing, screening, uh, petting and oil. Um, the machine is a 220 volt version um, just because you need that additional power to hose. As I said, the milling disc, the machine is 100 pound, 40 pound milling disc and you can add another uh, 45 pounds of extra weight on it. So. Yeah, so you need to be few Yes. All right. Uh, other than that, you have vacuum ports uh, on the machine, so you can hook up your vacuum, um, depending on what you're doing. I mean, if you, use, uh, if you use it on concrete, it needs a different vacuum class than on wood. Uh, it will catch the fine debris. It will uh, suck in the fine particles. The big particles, they will stay on the floor. Yeah, and anyone that's um, used any kind of, like, mastic removal tools or anything knows if you have dust collection, you're probably going to want to take your skirt and move it up and let that debris scatter. Otherwise, it gets clogged up and heated up and it'll clog the hose. It'll clog up. So for something like this, we'd probably, we'll probably pick up some of it, but um, this, this probably won't react like mastic and get gummy. Um, so fire it up. Come off fairly easy. All right. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. So you can see it comes up pretty clean, and it, it was it was a good adhesive. We didn't put down some <laughs> some cheap adhesive to make it a lot easier. Um, and as I said, that's the gentle version. There is a more aggressive version if you run into yeah more difficult situations. Mark, if you had a floor with a lot of dips in it, and you leveled it with Ardex, mm -hmm. could you use this to flatten the whole floor then? Yeah, but I would use the sanding segments then. As I said, there are, there are two removal tools, and you can actually see it. So the tool is sitting on here, and that's the cutting edge right here. Um, the sanding segments, there's, um, there are two. Um, it's MCD, it's uh, monocrystal and diamond tools, and it sits flat. And that's what you use to level out and sand it. And as I said, to make the concrete pours, so it, uh, uh, there's uh, no issues with uh, adhesion bonding. Can you use the same plate and just change the segments? Yes, yes. You can order the plates uh, either with uh, red, green, or black segments, um, and then you can change them out.
But you always want to change out all of them. So you don't want to run six uh, free green and free black. That doesn't work. It's just like putting a 60, 80, 100 grid on a trio yeah. and hope for it to work. <laughs> But one of the segments went bad, you could just replace only that one. Yeah, you could, but obviously, I mean, they wear out equally, so there's going to be a difference in height. So usually, I mean, they're all going to wear out equally. And usually, I mean, as I said, it's a diamond segment, so it's harder than anything you guys said. So if you hit a nail, is that going to like destroy that thing or what? No. You better let the machine go. The machine will, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. It will push through. So that's why 220 volts. The entire motor uh, is sealed. It's inside. No dust can get inside. The entire um, gear unit is hard and sealed. It's a, a really big gear unit, so you pretty much transfer the power from the motor. That's 220. And anyone that's um, done any prep work on concrete. Uh, knows that cementation dust is just, it gets everywhere. So having that motor sealed is all. Yep, and that's why the machine is heavier and bigger. You got a longer handle. You want that distance to the floor. As I said, if it grabs onto something, let go. Just let the machine go. All right? The machine will drag you around. It happened to me. <laughs> the machine will win the fight. <laughs> And with that extra weight, as I said, it gives you additional pressure, uh, it smooths it out a little bit, and it adds up. I mean, this, the machine, and the extra weight, you're talking about 200 and 210 pounds. Okay. The RPMs are a little higher. It's a little higher, it's 216 RPMs. Um, uh, your average purpose is 180. Uh, it's a 60 hertz motor, so instead of a 50 hertz in, in Europe, so it gives you 20% more RPM to start in 60. Right, so. Mark, so if you're, you're buffing away there, Brian, it's a blue off the wall. If you do it, you know, like I'm saying, mm -hmm. and it chips one of them teeth, right? You can't just replace that one tooth, there's no way to like kind of adjust it a little bit. You know, it depends how much your other teeth are worn out, you know? That's always, if you introduce a new teeth, because it's not just the, 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 the tooth right there itself, it's also that base plate that wears off, and that determines the depth. So now you have five worn out, and you put one new in there, it's, it's going to be a different height. So your machine's probably going to be a little bit unbalanced. As I said, it always depends how your machine is, but usually if you chip one, you're probably not even going to notice it. Because you got still five, five of them left, and you're probably never gonna chip an entire tooth. You're probably gonna maybe chip one side of it or something like that. Right. And that's it. And in reality, we're ripping stuff off. It's not like we're finishing it. Right. It is, as I said, it is a removal tool, and you can see it right there. I mean, it is pretty clean, but you can see some grooves, and especially if you do concrete. So the way it works, usually you would remove your material with one of the scrappers. Uh, green or black, and then you would follow with the sanding segments to even it out. Yeah, that can also be used uh, by the team for subfloors and stuff. Just don't put it on a hardwood floor, please. As I said, they're on, it's not meant to be used to remove, let's say, aluminum oxide finish on wood flooring, like other tools. Uh, those are set in place. If you grab onto an edge, you will take out that board. So this is subfloor prep only. That's what I mean. Yeah. Subfloor. Yeah. Yes. Plywood yes. subfloor. Yes. Yes. The seams. Yes. Yes. How about the flip, Mark? With the yes. Mm -hmm. um, so the flip, um, the new milling attachment is designed to go with our Eagle, our Hedgehog milling drum for the Hummel, which is designed to uh, even out strongly cut floorboards, take up aluminum oxide finish, uh, gym floors, seven, eight coats of finish. Um, wax and so ever. The flip is designed to be used on wood only. So not on concrete. So this is only wood. Um, again we got the we got the diamond inserts right here. Uh, flip attachment spins at roughly 3800 RPMs. If you get it, do me a favor, be careful with it. Let the machine do its job. You only pull it. You let the machine work. You don't push down. And yeah, just go easy on it.
That's pretty good at all. <laughs> it is really aggressive. Um, yes, I said, be careful with it, but for aluminum oxide finish, works great. Uh, strong cup throw boards, um, and as I said, multi layers of finish, especially for gym pouring. Uh, it is a great tool. How long will the teeth last? Um, it will last a very long time. It is so the tool itself comes from soft throw prep, from concrete, so it's a diamond insert. Um, if you use it on wood, I can't even tell you, I couldn't even wear one out yet. We've been testing it for two years now, ours is still holding strong. So it lasts a very long time. Same with the buffer. Same with the buffer. I mean, obviously, concrete dust is more aggressive, way more aggressive. Uh, that will wear out over, obviously, a certain period of time. But if you use the diamond insert of the flip on, on plywood or on wood only, it will last you a very long time. You don't have paper to change out. It doesn't gum up. It doesn't heat up. Um, usually, we sell it as an entire attachment. You can uh, change the disc yourself. It's just the free screws, and you can replace the disc, and that's it. So that will replace your 16, 24, 36 thread, and then you can continue, depending how how good you work with the machine. I mean, right there, I could probably go with an with an 80 grit. If you wanna, if you have it more aggressive, you probably have to start with a 60 grit or a 40. It's so holding clean that up. So yeah. And so you wanna you wanna set the machine pretty low right. on less aggressive. Yeah. If you take the high the high pitch of the wheels, it will dig in. I'll let you play with it later, and you'll see what it can do. Mark, I noticed you were going from right to left only, and you can lift it up, so you can't use it like the edge, like a normal edge, or just go back and forth. If you're used to it going in circles or something like that, and if you work with it a while, you can. But I just experienced by if you go forward, you push it down, and you actually dig it in. So I always try to pull the machine and peel the finish off. And there's only one cutting edge, right? Like it, yeah, it, it cuts it at 12 o'clock. Okay. So it cuts at 12 o'clock, and uh, it's a pretty on on uh, pretty low setting. So you can see, I almost lowered my wheels. So the, the flip comes with a tool, and you can put the, use the tool as a spacer, and I put it on fine on fine setting. I think I have the tool somewhere laying around. Yeah, here. On ah, the fine setting, like how much space are you hitting? That's pretty cool. Is sure. it the same with the edger, like, or when you have sandpaper on, as yes. far as the angle, so you'll yes. be hitting that much material yes. first. Exactly. Swipe it. I mean, you just you got your the cutting edge of the of the tool is just here. You can see the teeth okay. right here. Right. So right. But, but by by yeah. tilting it, so as I explained yesterday with the tool, there's uh, three spacers pretty much. So the the high spacer that's for your rough cut, the medium for your medium cut, and the tool itself is for your fine cut. And that's what I'm using for the milling disc. But if you if you raise that angle, that one edge of the of the teeth or of the tooth is gonna dig into the floor. Right. So you wanna set it flat. Yeah. I mean, we can do it if you want to see it. I can put it on aggressive and. Yeah. I mean, I think it would just make the most sense to keep it on the fine setting yes. anyway. And I mean, sanding floors. Obviously, it makes sense. You have rough, medium, and fine setting for your machine. But on the milling tool, you just want to keep it on fine. Right. I'm probably going to tear up the floor, but that's what we're here for, right? Mark, you're only moving in one direction, like the gentleman here said. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, taking into consideration that it is an edger, what happens if you try to back and forth with that label? As I said, if you're used to it, if you're used to flip, not applying pressure, because you don't want to lean on the machine, it's fine. But if you're, as I said, if you use your regular edger and you used to lean on it and you do the same with that thing. Yeah, because you, I, I can tell you had that, you know what was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> if you're aiming for a reinstall. Right. <coughs> so you can see it. I went forward and I had it on high, on a really aggressive, so it digged into the board right away. So put it on low, pull it, try it out, get comfortable with it, and then you're good to go. Now also that bag on there, we always hook ours up to a vacuum. You were saying yesterday the, the difference between the vacuum and the bag, the bag does the same thing that the vacuum is saying. So yeah, so the, the airflow we're creating inside our machines, they're usually it's usually a lot faster than your vacuum. So you're actually creating a blockage. Um, so there's no need. Uh, the flip comes with a vacuum attachment. 
it's somewhere. Uh, it comes with a vacuum attachment. If you want to hook up a vacuum <coughs> to it, sure, fine. Just make sure you got the right filter class and your vacuum can actually catch up with the dust that the flip is producing and the airflow. So it's possible it might not even be as efficient as a bag to bag. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah, and that's a lot of debris. So that's, uh, and uh, as I said, if we're talking about dust pickup, the machines are supposed to pick up the fine particles, the ones you're able to inhale. Uh, those ones, I mean, if you're able to inhale that, um, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's the leader of pack, right, as far as doing that. Correct? Yeah. ADD. ADD. But as I said, it comes with a vacuum attachment. You can attach your vacuum to it if you want to. If it's convenient, I'm not that big of a fan of dragging a hose behind me. And so I, I like the dust bag. The dust bag is bigger, yes, but we're creating that much airflow inside the machine. I've never run a machine that had a bag that big. Can you, most guys, or at least everybody in our company, at some point during the day, will end up kneeling down behind it because you get tired of being bent over. Can you kneel down with that? Yep. Um, and not have it like, you know, as your back. Well, you can just switch it over and then you kneel down. And yep. What happens when the bag is heavy? Uh, you're supposed to empty it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't throw it all the way up. It's because it's a big bag. You know what I mean? Fill it up. <laughs> There's a line on that right there. Didn't you guys ever see guys running an edger with a sander bag on it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never that big, though. Oh, I've seen oh, guys running an edger with the Hummel. Yeah. Hummel bag. yeah. yeah sure. The reason that you're doing that is for that concept. As I explained yesterday, the filter bags, they're high-tech fabric. They're supposed to filter the dust and leave the air out. If you fill it all the way up, the machine's going to obviously push the dust out and you're going to inhale the dust. So there's a reason why we say 30% is, 30-40% is max on filling up the dust bags. Yeah. Good stuff. So this is the um, intensive 2K that was put on about 45 minutes ago and uh, Tom's buffing it off, kind of evening everything out. It's already penetrated as much as it's going to penetrate. So they are, uh, then once we finish this buff, we'll let it sit overnight and we'll be able to coat this floor. What are we going to, are we going to do invisible? I think we're going to do invisible. So, and we'll post pictures on these floors when they're all finished, uh, particularly the hallway and this Monticello pattern of uh, cherry and maple. that white oak. It's 70. So 
So what I did there is the first pad is going to go and kind of equalize, right? So the one side of the pad. So what you're bringing in it is you're kind of just bringing it from those th uh, those wet areas into the thirsty areas, right? So some boys are going to take a little bit more on even. The cherry's obviously going to absorb a lot more than the, uh, than, the, uh, than the maple. The white oak is going to take different. That Brazilian cherry is going to take a little more, right? So what we want to do is we want to move some of that wet oil into those thirsty boards, resaturate them, make everything even one sheen. And that's what you're looking for when you're walking out. You're trying to look, so you're, you're kind of looking into the light to make it one even sheen, and then you're done. So usually one pad, one side of the pad will get you about 250 square feet. The other side will get you about two to 300 as well. So we're averaging about five to 600 square feet per pad. So very fast, super efficient, no need for towels. And again, towels, the problem is, since it's a penetrating oil, the towels actually pick up too much of the oil out of the surface, so you're actually weakening it. So that's why you always, if you have to use a, pay, a, a towel, that is fine, but always, always, always finish with the beige pad. And I've seen towels create inconsistent sheen. Exactly, exactly. Because they pull too much, they pull too little, then you don't have enough oil in some boards, then you can't resaturate that board. So sticking with the pads is the best system. This is where these systems, I push the tools all the way because they really make your life that much easier. As you saw with the roller, piece of cake, no taping it off, no loose fibers, no prepping it, straight new bucket out of, the, out, of, out, of the, out, of, out of a box, take the wrapper off and go. Okay. I hope that the camera can actually pick it up, but anyway, it's worked with American cherry uh, or white oak. I mean, what the color that that natural product is creating, I mean, it is, it's awesome. That, that white oak has really popped and gotten, you know, the color that white oak should be. The cherry is popping. Um, That's it, that's the whole process. Put it on, walk away, buff off. Walk away. Let this dry overnight. Come back the next day, exactly how we did over there. Go ahead and put your first coat of finish on. Come back two hours later, put another coat of finish. The job is done. After this process, the buffer stays in the van. Excuse me? So two coats of any other of our water-based finishes, it is approved with Invisible Protect as a one-coat system with Invisible Protect. It is a process, it is one coat of intensive, one coat of Invisible Protect to mimic that hard wax, hard oil, penetrating oil look, but with a surface coat. Awesome. All right, thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So that'll do it. Um, thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you guys learned something. We uh, are real excited about partnering with Loba and of course our continued partnership with Logler. Um, so Trio, I think about that, like how various species of wood sanded as flat. I wish you were here to feel it. Like it, they are so flat. Um, this end grain is completely flat. That is a tough floor to sand. Uh, and they did it multiple times with the trio and you know all the guys here are commenting how flat it is so um, go ahead over to cityfloorsupply.com you can check out Loba you can check out the trio the single you know all the equipment that you saw here today and uh, thanks for joining us have a great day